Okay, hello there, year 10. Welcome along to term three, lesson two. This is going to be a knowledge recap lesson. So as part of today's session, what we are going to do is I am going to take you through a series of quiz questions. And you are very, very simply, all you need to do is watch the video, answer the questions as you go along, and then submit the answers along with your final score to me via Microsoft Teams at the end of this session. So our learning objectives today are, I'm going to ask you to be able to recall knowledge appropriate to the component one written examination. So this quiz is going to be in three sections. It's going to be staging, theatre roles and terminology, which kind of comes under the same section because that will be section A in our exam. I'm then going to do a section B question, which will look at Blood Brothers. And then finally, we're going to look at section C, which will just do a really, really short quiz on things that I know to be true. Get your memories ready for that tomorrow, which is um, what we're going to be looking at in tomorrow's lesson. So you're going to be asked to recall that information and then demonstrate this knowledge in the answers that you give. Now, a really short announcement before I ask you to do anything else. Um, this is a really easy thing to cheat at. And again, um, you might think that looking in your book is a really, really sensible idea. It's going to give you more answers, going to make you seem more impressive to me. What I would say to you is this, I don't, I don't need you to get 30 out of 30 or however many questions there are. That's not important to me. What is important to me is that actually you, you just get the answers that you know correct, correct, and the ones that you don't know, get them wrong. It's absolutely fine not to get full marks. Um, as long as you know what mistakes you have made and the issues that you are having, um, I am happy with that. So again, there is no pressure to get full marks. There is no pressure to look at any of the resources that you have in front of you. I want this to be a, a closed book test. So I don't want you to have your copy of Blood Brothers. I don't want you to have any notes in front of you. I want you to try and do this from memory. And as I say, the amount that you get, while I'd like you to do really well, if it, if it turns out that you, that you don't, um, that is also perfectly acceptable. Okay, so there is no pressure. It's only about what you know. So the things that you are going to need for today's session are as follows. I'd like you to either use a blank page in the back of your exercise book or some scrap paper to complete the quiz on. So I'm going to ask you to pause the video now. When you have got that, uh, when you've got those resources in front of you, come back to the video and we will start today's lesson quiz. Okay, so our first round for section A is going to be on staging and things to do with staging a piece of theatre. So questions one to three are going to be based on the image that you can see in front of you. Now that image is basically a stage, okay? And the references, so S1 to 9, are positioned in different squares along that stage. Now, they represent different locations, different positions on that stage. So what I'm going to ask you to do is this. Using the correct staging terminology, where is the grid reference S1 positioned on the stage diagram? So question one, using the correct staging terminology, where is the grid reference S1 positioned on the stage diagram. Question number two, where is S5 the position for on the stage diagram. So what staging terminology, using the correct staging terminology, where is S5 on our stage? And then finally, for Question number three, where is S9? Using the correct terminology, tell me the stage positioning of S9 based on the figure that you can see in front of you, based on the diagram that you can see in front of you, where is S9?
Now, if you have not quite finished those questions or I've gone too quickly for you, pause the video now, go back, do question one, two, and three again before moving on. Okay, it's absolutely fine to do that. Again, we're all working at different paces. It's not a timed test. Okay, I can't read how fast we are writing those answers down because I can't see you. But by all means, pause the video now, go backwards. I'm now going to move on to the next question, which is going to be question number four. And this one asks you to look at a variety of different images on the screen in front of you. Now, question four is all about the images. So notice that the images are labelled A, B, C, D, E and F. So this question actually has six different subsections to it. So for example, what you will need to do is you will need to identify the appropriate stage type based on the image that you see in front of you. So question number 4a, you will need to write down the stage type of the top left hand stage. And then underneath it, you will see another stage type B. And again, what you will need to do on your answer sheet, you will just need to write 4B and write down the stage type. Then as you can see again, we move on to the right hand side at the top, you will see C. So again, you would write 4C and put your answer and so on and so forth as you go through D, E and F. Now, what I'm going to ask you to do for this one is I'm going to ask you to pause the video now. Pause the video, work through these answers. Again, there's no set time limit. It can take you as much time or as little time as you want. But I'd like you to go through those answers now. OK, right. So question five takes a different form. So what you can see on the screen in front of you are a variety of descriptions that summarize one particular type of stage. What I would like you to do is I'd like you to pause the video. I'd like you to read through the descriptions that you can see in front of you. And then for question five, I'd like you to write down the stage type that is being described. Pause the video now. OK, so similar scenario for question number six. Can you guess the stage type from the descriptions that you are reading? So again, please pause the video, read the descriptions in front of you. And then for question six, write down the stage type that you think it is. OK, question seven, same thing again. So reading the descriptions in front of you, can you identify the appropriate stage that is being described? Pause the video now, read through the descriptions and write down your answer. OK, question number eight, final one in this type of question. Can you guess the stage type from the description? So reading the descriptions below, pause the video now so you're able to read through them and then identify the appropriate staging type for question eight. Okay, so question nine is now looking um, at a different area of knowledge. So if you're set shows multiple locations on the same stage at the same time, what type of set is this? What is this called? So if your set shows multiple locations on the same stage at the same time, what is this called? We have reviewed this knowledge, okay? So think back, what can you remember? So if we've got lots of different locations being presented, it's always the same set, OK, but we're but we're changing it and maybe ever so slightly as we move through the scenes. But the set really remains the same throughout the entire production. What is this called? And then for question number 10, if your set shows only one location on the stage in a specific scene and then changes as it goes throughout the play. So, for example, scene one has a completely different set to scene two. What type of set is this and what is this called? 
So again, I am going to move on. You're more than welcome, especially for questions 9 and 10. If you would like to go back and have a look at those before moving on, please do. Okay, but I'm going to move on now. And this is going to now look at theatre roles and responsibilities. So what you will see again, very, very similar to what we have done previously. What is the name of the person who has the following responsibility? So this person runs the backstage element of the play and they supervise and organise the backstage crew, organising the rehearsal schedule and keeping lists of props and other technical needs. They create a prompt book and often call the cues for a performance. What person am I describing? Oh, apologies. I realised that I've just clicked ahead too quickly. Let me go back to it. So again, running the backstage elements of the play... They organise the rehearsal schedule, they create a prompt book, and they call the cues for the performance. What person am I describing? Again, like I said, if you need to pause the video, if you need to read through this, that's absolutely fine. Do so. We're going to move on to question 12. What is the name of the person who has the following responsibility? They learn a part, including the lines, the blocking, the movements of someone in case they are ill, in case they have an unexpected absence, in case they have a planned absence. This person fills in for the principal actor if they are unable to perform the show on a specific night. For question 12, write down the name of the person that I am describing, or the, the appropriate theatrical terminology role and responsibility. What person am I describing for question 12? OK, question 13. So again, I'm going to give you a description and all you have to do is identify the theatrical role or responsibility that I am describing. So they oversee the creative aspects of the production. They develop a concept or a central unifying idea for the production. They, li they liaise with designers, rehearsing the actors and ensuring all technical elements of the production are prepared for the performance. They give notes to the actors to help improve their performance. What person am I describing? Okay, question 14. Identify the theatre role and responsibility. So this person runs the theatre building, including overseeing and managing the front of house staff, also known as ushers, and the box office staff who sell the tickets. What person am I describing? And then finally for question 15... This person operates the technical equipment, such as the lighting and the soundboard during the performance. What person am I describing? What person holds this responsibility? OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to our next section. As previously, if you need to go back and work through any of the answers because I've gone too quickly, you are welcome to do so. Pause the video and then move back. But I'm going to move on to our next section, which is going to be looking at Blood Brothers. Now, for this section, I'm going to read through the questions for you. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to pause the video and then you can read through them again and you can take a look and think about some of those answers um, and give yourself a little bit more time than maybe you would be getting in this video. But I'm going to read through them first and then as I say you will have the opportunity to pause the video should you need to. If you can keep up with me then please do so. So question 16. Who is the playwright that wrote Blood Brothers? Question 17. Where is Blood Brothers set? Question 18. What is the social class of Mrs. Johnstone and her family? So Mrs. Johnstone and her family, what is their social class?
Question 19. Which two characters die at the end of the play? Question 20. Which character is unable to have children? Question 21. Which character is perceived to care more about their work than their family? Question 22. What is the name of Mickey's girlfriend who later becomes his wife in the play? Question 23. Who was the Prime Minister when Blood Brothers was written? Question 24. Who is omnipresent throughout the play? Who is omnipresent throughout the play? And then finally concluding our Blood Brothers round with question number 25. Which three decades is Blood Brothers set over? OK, so I'm going to ask you to pause the video now. If you need to review any of the questions, you're welcome to do so. But pause the video now before moving on. Get these questions sorted before moving on to questions that relate to section C. Good. OK, so looking at our final set of questions. So we're coming up to the end of our quiz, the end of today's session. Let's go through some Section C live theatre performance questions. Now, all these ask you to do, again, I'm not assessing your ability to answer the questions. It's more just looking at some of the knowledge that is in the play, seeing what you can remember about the production that you have watched. So question 26, what is the name of the character who goes travelling? Question 27. Which character dies at the end of the play? Question 28. What is the name of the place where the play is set? OK, so that's the primary setting. So where is it set? Question 29. Where does Pip move to? Question 30. Which physical theatre company assisted in producing the play? So they co-produced this production. Can you tell me which theatre company, which physical theatre company did this? And some of the work is obvious in the play. Question 31. Where does Mark move to? So Mark moves in the play. Where does he move to? And then finally, question 32, who has been fraudulently stealing money from his workplace? Which character has been fraudulently stealing money from their workplace? OK, so again, as before, you are welcome to pause the video now. Take a look on screen, answer any of the questions that you might not have answered already, and then come back to um, pausing the video and we will move on to check the answers. OK, wonderful. So let's take a look at the answers. So for the first three questions, what I asked you to do is I asked you to identify using the appropriate terminology, the the stage positionings on the diagram. The first one was upstage right. The second one was centre stage. The third one was downstage left. Question four asked you to identify the appropriate stage types by looking at the images. 4A was traverse. 4B was in the round. 4C was promenade. 4D was end on, 4E was thrust, and 4F was proscenium arch. Question 5 described the benefits and the disadvantages of specific stage types. It asked you then 
to appropriately identify the stage was that was being described. So that was question five, six, seven, and eight. So question five was promenade. Question six was end on. Question seven was thrust. And question eight was proscenium arch. Then question nine and ten asked you to identify two different types of set design or two different ways in which you might design the set for a production. The first was a composite set. So a set that stayed the same throughout a production and then a discrete set for question 10 which changes um, for the relevant scene. So scene one would have a different set to scene two and so on and so forth but with a composite set for question nine the set really stays the same throughout the production. Wonderful you are able to pause the video now if you want to just make sure that your answers are correct but if you have managed to keep up with me let's move on. So theatre roles and responsibilities round. Question 11 to 15 gave you a description of the type of person who works within the performing arts or the theatre industry and you were asked to identify that person using their correct title. Okay so question 11 was the stage manager, question 12 was the understudy, question 13 was the director, question 14 was the theatre manager and question 15 was the technician. OK, and if you've got any of those ones wrong specifically, it might be really interesting to go back to the video to take a look at those descriptions again and see where you might have gone wrong, what you might have um, done or what you might have considered that was that was inaccurate. So it's really good to go back through some of those answers if you if you can just to see, oh, actually, or oh, now I know the answer. I can see where that has worked or why that is the answer. So. Then what we did is we looked at section B and we looked at Blood Brothers, OK, with the first question asking you about who wrote it. And that was Willie Russell. The second question asked you to name where it is set, which was Liverpool. The third question asked you the social class of Mrs. Johnston and her family. And that was uh, working class. If you've put lower class, please don't put that. Okay, it is working class. She's she she is a working woman. She works hard. Lower class and working class are different things. Working class is the terminology that we want. Okay. Question number nineteen: The people that die were Edward and Mickey. Question twenty: Mrs. Lyons is the person who is unable to have her own child, and that uh, there is the necessity for Mrs. Johnston giving her. Her baby, one of her twins. Question 21. Mr. Lyons seems to favour his job over his family. And question 22. Linda, she is the person who marries and is in a relationship with Mickey. Pause the video now if you need to go through any of those answers. Again, if you need to, if you need to just make sure that you've got those right. Pause the video now. If not, we'll move on. And then finally... Margaret Thatcher was the Prime Minister. OK, so the question number 23. Margaret Thatcher was the Prime Minister when Blood Brothers was written. The omnipresent throughout the play was the narrator. So that the omnipresent really means the person who is always there, but the others don't really always acknowledges um, his existence. So he is always giving us an overview of what's going on. He's always there. He's He's looking onto the drama almost. OK, so he is observing what is happening. And then question 25, it's 60s, 70s and 80s. So the play is set across those three time periods. OK, so now what we're going to do is we are going to look at the answers to the questions for things I know to be true. Rosie is the person that went travelling. Fran is the person who died at the end of the play. It is set in Hallett Cove, which is in Adelaide, Australia. Pip is the person who moves to Vancouver for question 29. Question 30. Frantic Assembly are the people who co-produced, um, who had that involvement, who had that creative direction. Um, they were the people who were involved in producing this production. Mark. For question 31, Mark goes to Sydney, Australia. And then question 32, Ben is the character who fraudulently, fraudulently apologies, steals money 
from his company and gets into lots of trouble about it. And actually his mum ends up bailing him out um, with money that she has saved secretly from Bob. Okay, so what again you can do is you can pause the video now. You can make sure that you've got all of those answers correct if you weren't keeping up with me reading through them with you. And then finally, what I would like you to do is this. Please, just all I'm asking you to do on your mobile phone, take a photograph of the quiz of the answers. Again, you don't need to write out the questions out. Okay, I've got the questions in front of me. I've been reading from them. Okay, and just very, very clearly in your photograph, all I need is the score that you got. Okay, and please check the email that was sent with the resources for this lesson to know when this work is due in. Okay, it's labelled really clearly in the email or on Microsoft Teams where you have found this work and this video. So make sure that you have that in before or on the date that it is due. Okay, I'm going to open up an assignment on Microsoft Teams, so you'll need to upload it in there. Wonderful. Okay, tomorrow what we will be doing is we'll be having a look at live theatre. I look forward to speaking with you then. Stay safe. Thank you very much. Goodbye.